Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. We're at Romy's headquarters in Rugby. Now, did you know that Mr. Romy started the company many years ago? He had a lathe, he couldn't afford the next one, so then he made it. How impressive is that? And that's the foundation of where we are today. Now, in today's show, We've got a wicked show because we've got some really impressive demos. We're ramping up to 45 degrees. We've seen some drilling done with an end mill. And we've got a UK premiere of this machine behind me. Plus an awesome cycle time challenge all happening in today's Swarf and Chips. Now, what I did fail to mention to you was the fact that we're actually at their very busy open house and everyone's watching behind the cameras now. So anyway, let's start. Gio, what do you love about Romy? Well, what I really like about Romy is that they are a complete OEM of their product. They've got full control of their product. They've got their own foundry in which they make their own castings and they design the machine tool from the ground up. And I just can't wait to, to, to hear all about the grand reveal of their new GL300. Perfect. And Joe? Yeah, similar to Joe, really. That They're a heavy, robust machine. They make their own components, majority of them. And yeah, last time we came, we saw the D-Series version 5. Today, we're going to see the premiere of this machine behind us. But as I say, last time we saw the premiere of the version 5 milling machine. And earlier today, I put it through its test. So, Les, we've got this demo on the Remy D800 V5. And obviously, you're from Kenner Metal. It's Kenner Metal tooling. Can you explain you know, the process? Yeah, the, uh, the process is twofold. Uh, the first is indexable tools, and, and the first stage, as you can see, we're just taking six millimeters off the top, and we're showing different means of doing that. Uh, shall we say, what, this is what people normally do, that you would use a 90 degree, because it's got a, a 90 degree shoulder on the, uh, on the job. Uh, but actually, uh, the advantage of it is that it can do six millimeters deep, but a very low feed. So you can see physically from the, from the film, but actually it's, uh, it, it is a little bit slow. Uh, it's also very vulnerable to a crash because you can tell just from the noise and listening to it. What we're going to use now is hopefully a 45 degree cutter. This is our Dodeca system. It's our mini, so it only takes a low depth of cut, but it's an economical 12 sided insert versus the four. And very roughly the piece of carbide is similar shape and size, similar cost, but we've got 12 edges now that uh, we're running. So this has got to do two passes, but actually the feed rate is 50% higher due to the 45 degree angle. And, and it, like you say, it's more economy, it's also a more stable process, but we're also showing off the, the rigidity of the machine, aren't we? It's okay saying it, it, we're running at these impressive feed rates, it's about the machine. It, it is, yes. Um, the rigidity of the machine helps because it's a brand new machine, of course, and that's not a luxury that we have, we have too often, or I have too often. But what will happen here is that the, the, what's also affecting us here is the direction that the forces are going in. So at 45, there are half up and down. Now with the round, which is the next one that comes in here now, this is our recommendation. It's our recommendation to, uh, to machine with really. You'll see that we're able to make a compensation, but we're also, by our choice, we're putting more forces up the spindle. So this will work on an older machine, uh, whereas the 90 degree really is testimony to the Romy, if you like, and how, how fast we go. Very, very quiet though. Yeah, absolutely. That and this is the this is the bit for the machine really, is that you know to be able to take uh, 44 diameter. Uh, we could have gone deeper. You're allowed to go one times diameter. We could have gone 44 deep, but of course we're, we're keeping the uh, the demonstration, you know, concise. It's enough to sort of show what's going on. This next operation then is just going to show another way of entering into material. This you'll notice by the, by the difference in sound is much quieter. And this is the two, uh, the, an end mill with two uh, edged insert in. So it's not the most economical, but it is able to plunge and go straight into the, into the work. We're doing 38 diameter and two millimeter uh, depth passes in a helical means. But, but typically this would be to open up a pocket, right? Or maybe to yeah, no, make, make good a hole. This is showing uh, opening a pocket from solid. You know, and if, you've got a, if you're in dye mold and you want to make that sort of decision, uh, they, them sort of operations, then you would use that type of tool. What we're doing now is that we, we, we're taking an opportunity to show something we were just released, which is our uh, TE Harvey 2 TE uh, cutter, sorry, Harvey 1 TE cutter. And this has uh, got a lot of new design features on it, which allows us to do its party piece, which is now. 
which is the full slot. Crikey, that's quiet, isn't it? Yeah, it's very quiet. I mean, normally the, everything would be wrapped in. We have got a new machine and, and the machine is helping us. But nonetheless, even, you know, normally to full slot, you cannot full slot with four teeth normally. You know, you would have the thing shifting into the, into the car park. Uh, so they're um, very effective. The rest of the demonstrations are not really features that you would see on any operation or any component. But they're just showing really how robust the, the tool is and the machine is together so that we actually, you know, we're producing ramping 50, 45 degrees, 30 degree, 10 degree, and we're plunging into holes, we're drilling, you know, which is a unique feature. I'm, I must say, it, it's, it's so quiet, the only thing you can hear really is a swore fit in a guard, so, you know, it's, yeah, exactly you know, it's a very that. stable process. It's a, it's a very, I must admit, I'm a milling product specialist and I've been doing this for years, and I have to say that this cutter, we get told a lot of times that, you know, these things are so good, it's, you'll not believe it, this is actually true. You know, we're finding that this is true. Yeah, well, that's the end of the demo, and I must admit, yeah, the strategies, the tooling's impressive, but I must admit, it's a big, heavy, robust machine, 40 taper, acting like a 50 taper, you, you know, it's, it's a good partnership. Yeah, it makes a big difference to us, uh, and um, we have a, they have, well, Romy have a customer that they're selling, I'll, I'll not name it, but um, I was speaking yesterday, I think they've made a good decision in purchasing a Romy machine. They have cast beds, they're solid, they absorb the, uh, the vibrations and the energy. And generally, you've, before you start, the machine is helping you. I honestly think that that was the best demo that I've personally ever seen for metal removal. That was so impressive. Yeah, quite often we see these five axis machines doing all these eccentric manoeuvres, but nothing better than three axis machining sometimes. But what struck me is you couldn't hear it. It, no. it, it just shows what can be achieved when you get a, you know, a really heavy, robust machine tool, good work holding, good, um, good, you know, good tool holding as well. And the bit in the middle, the cutting tool, all working in harmony. Great demo. No, top class. I, I, I can't really add any more to that. It was, it was phenomenal. I mean, you know, the, the, the metal removal rates with that end mill, it, was just, it wasn't just doing one application. It was profiling, ramping. Um, you know, it was doing slotting, full, full diameter slotting with, you know, with one end mill to do all them different operations. But the, 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 the rate it was removing them chips, we it was so quiet. It was just so quiet. Right, next up, Paul was talking to Eduardo about the machine, the big reveal of the GL300S. Eduardo, this machine here, the GL300, uh, flagship machine here at the event this, uh, this week. Can you tell us about this model and why Romy introduced it? Yeah, this machine um, is our 300S. This S means the machine has a sub spindle, but also count, counts with uh, Y axis milling, uh, counts with the new generation of the fan control with IHMI, and several new features. Was this a gap in the market that you were missing, the multi axis turning? Because I know your GL280 has been very popular, uh, so are your semi CNC teach lathes very popular. But this is something that you've not been able to offer before, isn't it? Yes, before we had some specific machine with multiple configuration, but now we have an entire line with this. So from the smallest size to the bigger size of the slant bed, we can offer all this range of configuration depending on the customer needs. Uh, quite a heavy machine, quite a big machine as well. Is the idea to provide something that is very, very heavy duty for industry? Yes, actually this is the... This is the way that ROM make the, the machines, okay? So all the machines, all the casting, all the base is made in our foundry. So the robustness is the way we work, okay? Um, and will you be having these machines here? I know we've got one here in rugby today, but I believe this one's sold, which yeah. is good news. Yeah. Are you regularly gonna bring, be bringing in multi-axis, one-hit machining type machine tools? Yes, we already placed the order for stock. So this is a premiere, but several machines are already in the boat and leaving our factory headquarters. So beginning of the year, the factory here will be plenty of uh, machines available for immediate delivery. There you have it, another solid machine from Romy. Not long before we see the cycle time challenge. So what are your thoughts on this machine, Gio? I think that the, the fact that the machine is a modular construction, the weight of the machine, again, solid casting. I believe it weighs around five ton. Um, the kilowatt power in the main second spindle and the turret with the live tooling milling functionality 
It's a real fantastic piece of equipment and powered by the new touchscreen Fanet control system. Yeah, and do get in touch with Romy because the value for money on this machine is incredible. That's exactly it. I, I, Joe's pretty much said it all. Outstanding value for money. The, the door's optimised, ready for automation, so you can have a bar feeder or we've got a halter robot here today, but you could, you know, robot load as well. But the weight of the machine, the fact it's got Y axis, uh, second, uh, second, second spindle, yeah. you know, it's, I was astounded when I saw it. It's yeah. a quality machine. Yeah. Okay, later on in the show, Gio's going to be talking about the synergy between the CNC machines and the injection moulding side of the, uh, uh, the, the company. But next up is my Cycle Time Challenge. It is now time for your Cycle Time Challenge. And the Cycle Time Challenge is on the D1000. The material is EN24T. So let's look at the part and all of its processes. We're talking about using Hymer tooling at the moment and we're using the SolidCam patented eye machining software. So the first op we're talking about is the eye machining. That's that high speed machining strategy. That's creating the star shape that you're seeing. Then we're using to create this slant that you're seeing in the part um, is your high speed roughing. Then we're going on to the high speed surface finishing, finishing that off with a deburring process. Then we're taking it off the vise for the second operation. I'll just twist it round here. Um, so that's a shunk system that we're removing it from, putting it back on. And then we're eye machining the blaze to create that shape. Then we're profile finishing, deburring and finishing it off with that really lovely logo that you're seeing there. So how long did it take to make this part on the Romy D1000? And there you have it. So make sure you're putting your cycle time guesses in the comments box below. And what we do is we give a Swarf and Chips goodie bag out to the winner every single week. So next up, we're going to hear from Geo talking about the synergy between the injection molding machines and the CNC machines. I want to find out now about the synergy between the machine tools and the injection molding machine tools. Now, Neil, you're the perfect person to talk to. If I was Mr. End User manufacturing mould tools on my milling machines, why wouldn't I then look to actually start producing moulds on injection moulding machines? Exactly, and that's what Romy's really good at. So, with our uh, company doing the machining centres, they can then produce the tools, and the, the knowledge and the skill that we have to build a machining centre is also in an injection moulding machine. So we know we've got the strength, the durability and the rigidity in the machine, so it's going to last as long as a machining centre. So I'm Mr End User and I'm using a D800 to produce mould tools on a frequent basis, but now I'm, I'm looking at the injection moulding process and I want to start moulding components and selling them. You know, I approach you and ask you, you know, how can I get into this arena? What questions would you ask me? So, yeah, so there's a number of questions we need to know. So we need to know what the material is that's going to be running through the machine. What size is the tool that's going to be going into the machine? What is the actual product that you're going to make? What is the flow length that's going to be required to make that uh, product? What is the wall thickness that's going to be of that product? How many zones is the hot runner system going to be on the tool? Is there any uh, core pulling that's going to be required on the tool? What, uh, how are we going to get the material to the machine? So that is what Romy is very good at. We're very good at putting together projects for customers uh, so that if they're looking at a new moulding machine, then with the material handling, then how do you get the product out of the machine? Are they going to be looking at automation? what type of automation is going to be required. And, and Romy, working with our key suppliers, are very good at putting this team together, sitting down with the customer and giving the customer basically what he wants, and, but allowing him to carry on running his own business and then we will just project manage the whole lot for him. So effectively, you're talking about supplying not just an injection moulding machine, but a complete solution, a turnkey package with automation if necessary. Exactly. So it, from, the, from the machine behind us, you can see how we put together a two-shot machine doing two different materials, using the automation as well to get that product out. And then customers that we've already done for, like Suscom Industries, Easy Trim, Building Products Company, setting up the complete factory for them 
Now they carry on their day-to-day -day business and we basically just take over the mantle of setting it all up. No stress for them. So effectively what you've installed is a money printing machine. Basically, yes, it is. It's just like the, uh, Richard Branson with Virgin. When the planes are in the air, they're making him money. When on the ground, they're not. When a moulding machine is actually operating and producing parts, the customer is making money, and that's what it's all about. Cheers, Neil. So there you have it. If you want to start printing machines, you're currently using Romy milling machines or CNC lathes, but you want to enter this arena, no better way to enter it with Romy UK. It's quite interesting to see an injection moulding machine on um, an MTD video like this. So what are your thoughts, Joe? I've actually done a bit of injection moulding, believe it or not. I did about four years and it's amazing how that technology has come on in probably about 12, 15 years. But I think the synergy is quite an important fact. You know, you quite often go to a mould shop and they'll have a tour room with CNC machines. So there's an obvious fit there. But why not be a, a machine shop that goes into mould making and ultimately injection moulding? It's a natural fit. And working with Romy, you're working with the same brand, so you've got that, you know, follow-on throughout it within your machine shop. Joe? Um, Joe, Gio? Yeah, I think that uh, the, the fact that they can offer a turnkey package, they take all that uncertainty away from you and just, you know, basically they'll, they'll set it up for you. So I think it is a natural fit. I think people that are looking to, um, you know, broaden their horizons and to look into different marketplaces, it could be a great option for them. You know what I like about Romy as well and what I've learned today because at the event you get chatting to everyone is that Romy, they've got solid machines, you say about their foundry, but also they're, they're set up now for automation. I know we harp on it about it quite a lot, but they're there. They are at the forefront of technology. Yeah, it, again, you've said it all for me. You know, they're, they're a great company, great people, which yeah. we can't forget. You know, lots of application engineers on both sides of the business. Got a training area upstairs as well. It, exactly. They've always got machines in stock. You know, 2019 was a good year for Romy, but I genuinely feel 2020 be a fantastic year with the GL range behind us and also the version 5 milling machines as well. It'll be a great year. Any, any last thoughts or have we said anything to you? I, I just thought it was brilliant today, you know, like some of them cutting tool demonstrations w w were phenomenal and it was great to see Joe like, and get Joe's expertise out from, you know, they were phenomenal. They and, really were. And their system partners as well, because when we were talking about the cycle time change, you've got solid cam, high mail, lots and lots of people networking here too. Anyway, make sure you put your guesses in the comments box below for this week's Cycle Time Challenge. And gents, what do we always say? Come on, get close, get close. You don't want to, but ready? Keep, keep those spindles turning. turning. <laughs>